A question we hear all the time from our clients is, how do I secure a media partner or a media sponsor? We recently did some training for our clients inside the Sponsorship Accelerator, and I thought it'd be useful to share that training in this week's video. Check it out. So we're going to talk media partnerships today. I'll just frame it really quickly. When we talk, when we say media partner, what we mean is uh, obviously media company engages you to help you promote your message while you help the media partner get new readers, listeners, viewers, etc. So if you think of this like a traditional sponsorship, as you should, if it's Nike, you're going to try to help them sell shoes. If it's the LA Times, you're going to help them get new subscribers. So you offer them access to your audience. They offer you access to their audience. That becomes the swap. Once people dig into the calculator, they start to see how valuable media partnerships are. So we're going to talk about um, the just really quickly the benefits. Maybe some of these are really obvious, but it's worth it's worth flagging. Obviously, you're increasing your reach and impressions. And so, yes, of course, that includes awareness. But I think um, not more not more appropriately, but it makes sense in this context. Also, your value. You get to drop a big number in the media partnership, the media footprint uh, section of the calculator. And as some of you have already seen, it spikes your value significantly. Having a media partner also increases your brand value. So all of your assets become worth more all of them, all logo placement, social media, all are elevated because you're working with a known media entity. Uh, obviously it can grow your audience and customer base. It will attract new sponsors. Um, it can expand your reach, you can sell tickets if you're an event. Um, you can then use the media partnership to activate other types of sponsors. So if you have a sponsor over here that's doing a contest and you have a media partner, you can promote the contest with your media partner and really significantly drive up the value of the contest. Uh, or if you're doing some cool like public service or awareness campaigns, a media partner will really spike the number of people engaging in your activation. And of course, your fulfillment reports look way better um, when you're when you're submitting them, showing you had 800 million eyeballs on your um, uh, on your property. These are the benefits. I'm going to save the cons until the end. There are two really simple tactics. One is the, I have no money, but I want a media partner anyway. That is the organic tactic. Then there's the, I have money and I'm going to invest it and try to leverage it. The problem with the organic model is what you end up doing is reaching out to a media partner saying, give us some awareness and they agree. The problem is it's not guaranteed. Rarely is it guaranteed. You don't know when or where you're going to show up in their media mix. Because you can't guarantee it, you can't value it as your sponsorship opportunity. And ultimately, because you're not paying for it, they can veto what your messaging. So if you say, hey, would you mind promoting Nike? They're going to say, well, we have a deal with Reebok, our advertiser, so we just can't do that. And you're just out. Uh, so you may not get the prime real estate. You can't control the story. You can't use it for advertising or strong call to action. And um, for those of you who include your sponsor information in a press release, there's no guarantee that the organic media is going to pick up your sponsors. So should you pursue organic media? 100% oh, yes, there are, there are thousands of benefits. But if all you have is a plan to send out um, press releases or uh, you're just you have a kind of a verbal deal only with the local media, uh, with a local media company, I would not recommend trying to monetize it. Therefore, the best tactic is to show up with cash. Basically what Steven just said, like, hey, we'll give you some free assets. Well, why don't we talk more strategically? And why don't we talk about leveraging perhaps our media budget? So that instead of you giving us $1,000 worth of stuff, maybe we come to the table with $5,000 and you give us $30,000 worth of stuff but we can help you meet these other three or four goals that you just expressed to us. So you're actually building a sponsorship deal where in this bizarro world, you're actually giving them money. But the value here is that you get them into a contract, you get guaranteed impressions, 
you get prime time impressions. You can control the story because you're going to negotiate it. Um, and therefore you can charge for it in your sponsorship package to your cash sponsors, which of course means that your media partnership must precede cash sponsorship for it to be valuable. So organic is makes your fulfillment report look really good. Probably makes your partners happy, hard to monetize going forward with cash in order to create a media partnership that you can monetize. When it comes to securing a media partnership, you want to be laser focused on who your audience is, who your attendees are, your database, social media following. In other words, this is not a shortcut around knowing your audience. You must know your audience in order to approach media. If media is interested in you, despite you not knowing your audience, it's because they know something that you don't. They've done the market research and they know you appeal to their market. So you are at a disadvantage. You want to know your audience. So you still got to survey your audience. You still got to build out those audience uh, niches, avatars, niches. You can review all organic media that you've had in the last 12 months, and that will give you your hit list of which media companies think your story appeals to their audience. So any organic media you've picked up, that's your top five list of people you should be talking to about uh, a proper media partnership. You want to shortlist them and do your outreach. Once you've done your outreach, you do exactly what Stephen just described, which is the discovery process outlined in the sponsorship accelerator. Who's your target market? What are you trying to achieve with them? How do you measure success? What's working? What's not? How can we help you achieve those goals? And the last piece, uh, we do have a media budget and I would be interested in talking about a more structured media partnership if we can make all these things fit together. Um, you do that, you're probably gonna walk away with a, a decent media partnership, but it will cost you some money. We monetize it later with the sponsorship. Once you know what they want, you still have to build activations because a media partner simply getting their logo in front of their target market is not helpful. If anyone uh, has the market cornered on awareness-based assets, it's the media. Th they've got all the eyeballs. So they're probably looking for something else. They want someone to take a step in their sales funnel. They want someone to engage in some way. Maybe they want to do some pass-through rights where your audience connects with one of their advertisers and one of their current partners. You negotiate your budget and ROI, make sure you have agreed on a guaranteed minimum number of impressions. I'm not giving you contract advice, but I will tell you, I would never sign a media partnership contract that did not have a guaranteed minimum number of impressions because that's what goes into the calculator. And if they agree to it, then uh, I know they'll have to deliver. And then I take that with me to my title sponsors and say, we know we're going to get this giant number of impressions because I have a signed media agreement with whomever. Um, obviously you want to run it through your valuation calculator and then you go to market for your cash sponsors. So this is the ideal scenario for building a media partnership, a media campaign that you plan to monetize in your sponsorship portfolio. So drawbacks of media partners, you do need to secure them before a cash sponsor in order to impact your value. They take time, they cost money. And if you're going organic, there are definitely no guarantees. And of course they slow you down a bit. If you like what you heard and want to learn more about how to build a sponsorship program that media partners would be interested in and that cash sponsors would be interested in as well, check out the description below where I'm going to drop a link to some free training that I put together called How to Grow Your Sponsorship Program. And if you like this content and want us to keep producing more videos and training like this, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon.